Where I would start as a game company, um, Sakaguchi, he created the game Final Fantasy, and that was the most successful role-playing game of its time and its genre. And it's gone on to make 8, 9, and 10, and I think it's on to Final Fantasy 11. There's a whole group of anime films that are based on video games. Something's not right! It shouldn't be happening! Something's attracting them! Uh. Final Fantasy is an anime. It's got very much an anime feel to it. It was made for an American audience, because there's more money. But at the same time, it definitely is an anime. Final Fantasy is a gorgeous work. It's incredibly stunning use of uh, computer animations like nothing I've ever seen before, in all honesty. Two coming through the eighth wall. The quality is just really so high that it looks almost human. I mean, their characters are almost too good. Zion. Zion has to be warned. How? Someone has to get to a drop point. What? Are you crazy? We can't broadcast now. We have to. I'll go. There isn't much time. I'll make it. Sakaguchi wanted to make actors that didn't exist and digital characters that pushed the level of realism to the point where some people could believe that they are real. Pardon me. I'm sorry. I was in my own little world. Is it important? Very. At the time, we were just finishing up Final Fantasy and I was pretty much done. And the producer called me up and said, the Wachowski brothers have handed a script to us and they've seen some of the stuff we've done on Final Fantasy and they'd like us to do this piece. And I jumped at it. I said, I would love to. And I, I, I gathered um, three or four of the animators and I said, let's do a test. Let's, let's try and make this happen. We put together a quick piece that we just grabbed our lead character, Aki. We gave her a haircut, gave her short hair, put, in, put her in a black leather suit, and they gave us a model of a sentinel, and we animated them together just to show that we could do it. The Wachowski brothers handed the script to us and we read it and realized that we'd need to build up the action scenes. The action was described a little bit, but not in depth. Tani Kunitaki, our art director and storyboard artist, worked with Wachowskis and kind of came up with a lot of the extra story that we needed to fill in. We did look at the Matrix quite a bit to try and rebuild what they had done and get the same feel. Osiris is very unique in that it is the most literal of all the pieces. Because it's you know, computer animation, it almost looks exactly like the movie and feels like the movie. I think the audience's expectations are going to be very, very similar as what their expectations would be if it was live action. So we tried to approach the whole thing with the same team, you know, to a great extent, uh, as the movies. We got the Sentinel model and the Digger model, and then we also got a lot of conceptual drawings. Osiris has a lot of things, you know, characters in common with the movies. The Sentinels is a character. The Osiris is like a brothership to the Nebuchadnezzar. These are all characters that have to have the same life and the same depth. We actually got some reference the way the tunnels look, the way a Sentinel swarming looks, where you have hundreds and thousands of Sentinels in a, in a corridor. There are a lot of sentinels in Osiris, so uh, that, and that's one of the things I've been doing, you know, lately is just, as well as the NAB, recreating the engine that I made all of the sentinel sounds for, uh, and it's very complex for go, the movie. Go, go. So now I can kind of spawn new sentinels out of that engine. For me, it was a lot about the detail of the world and the texturing team that we had for sets and props. And they had developed a lot of the tools and shaders to create that stuff on Final Fantasy. So creating a lot of that, especially the more rustic, uh, rusted metals and stuff like that were much easier for them. I think the greatest improvements were in the faces, as well as in the skin and, and the bodies. Sentinels. Damn it. Traditionally, the way a computer renders these things, if, if you think of like an eggshell, 
it just renders, you know, an eggshell's pretty hollow, but it just renders the edge and the side of it, but the skin, there's volume, and light goes inside and bounces around and comes out, and all these complexities hasn't really been thought out. In Final Fantasy, we really had a lot of cloth covering up the characters all the time, and then this, the opening sequence, we knew it was going to be very bare, and we need to see muscles deforming you, and that was something we really tried to push much further than people had done before. Goodbye, then. Jue, we knew she was uh, Asian. We wanted to create a, a very beautiful, soft look to her, yet also have a little bit of strength to her. We actually got some reference footage that we could use to get like skin texture reference and stuff like that. Women, and we just compiled different looks and kind of figured out what look would work best for Jue. The brothers wanted her to be extremely sexy and, and erotic at the same time. So we put as much of that in as we could by the design of the outfits and uh, the performance. The feeling of being handed that to work in The Matrix. I love the film so much that uh, to be given that opportunity was great. It's unique in that the whole piece of Osiris could be in The Matrix movie.